I was looking through an old book recently that was about vertical antennas, and I came across a formula in a chapter on ground radials that I had never seen before, and it didn't make sense to me initially. This formula was for an expression to compute soil conductivity based on a measurement known as the four-point method. So I thought in this video it would be interesting to take a look at the physics of measuring soil conductivity. And uh, in the process, uh, we'll come to understand where the formula comes from. So to start off with, let's consider the surface of the ground. And suppose we embed two electrodes in the ground, electrodes A and B. And we bias points A and B in such a way that current will flow between them. And then the basic idea is to use Ohm's law to estimate the resistivity of the soil. Current, in this case, if we bias one electrode like this and one electrode like that, will only flow through the earth, not the air. And charge, or free charge, in the earth will flow along the resulting field lines, electric field lines, that will surround the electrodes. And they'll look something like this, the field lines. I'm not drawing this very well. They'll be symmetric, but you get the idea. So these are the electric field lines, E, surrounding these two electrodes. Now, one of the things that we know is that the force on a charge Q is equal to that charge times the field. Uh, and so what this means is that any charge flowing in here will flow along the field lines. This essentially gives us then a current map between electrodes A and B. Usually we think about Ohm's law within the context of a simple linear circuit or linear geometry, like a wire and a resistor. If we think about a resistor like this, that resistor within it has a cross-sectional area, A, and a length of the resistor being L. In the usual case, if we bias the resistor, we know that there'll be electric field lines in the resistor that flow from one end to the other. It'll be inside the resistor. And so current will flow along the lines of force. We can compute the current through that resistor I, it's going to be the current density times the cross-sectional area. Current density, J, is the current per area. This is how the general form of Ohm's law is usually expressed. It's, in, it's expressed in terms of the current density the conductivity of the material, and the electric field. If we think about a resistor, we can write Ohm's law now as I over A equals sigma E. But we know that sigma is 1 over the resistivity rho times E. And it turns out that E can be expressed in terms of the difference of potential over the length of the resistor. So this will be equal to 1 over rho V over L. Just rewriting this, I over A is equal to 1 over rho V over L. We can write it as V equals I R, where R is rho L over A. Resistance is equal to the resistivity of the, of the material times the length of the material divided by the cross-sectional area. Continuing on, we have J equals sigma E. So again, let's consider our electrodes embedded in the earth, electrodes A and B. And for the time being, we're just going to consider one electrode. And let me redraw the field lines. What we want to do is figure out all the current flowing out of one electrode or into another electrode. Now, instead of just a simple cross-sectional area, we have to look at the 
area of a hemisphere. So this is now going to go down into the ground and we have to add up all the little filaments of current that are emanating out of this hemisphere. So we know that the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. So the surface area of a hemisphere is going to be 2 pi r squared. We can write j equals um, i over a equals sigma e for Ohm's law. So we're going to have i over a is equal to writing the conductivity as the inverse of the resistivity and now writing E not as V over L but as a derivative dV dr and there's a minus sign that goes in here if you're from physics or electrical engineering you may recognize this dV dr as simply the expression that the uh, field is equal to the negative gradient of the potential. And here we have an expression uh, from which we can derive V. This is a simple differential equation that integrates very readily. We have V equals negative I rho over two pi, the integral from infinity to R of dr prime over R prime squared. Uh, and that becomes V equals rho i over 2 pi, 1 over r. This now is our expression of Ohm's law for this experimental situation. The formula I found in the antenna book stems from the following experiment. So they describe a measurement whereby line voltage is passed through a light bulb and a 14.6 ohm resistor uh, and then into the ground and then back out of the ground for the return path to the uh, outlet. They talk about a voltage V1 being measured across that resistor and then they talk about another voltage being measured between two other electrodes that are inserted into the ground. So these two end electrodes, A and B, are the electrodes that we saw in, in, in the earlier part of the video. And we'll call these electrodes C and D. The formula that they list in the book for ground conductivity is 22 V1 over VCD. Uh, and the units of this are millimoles per meter. How do we get this formula out of the expression for Ohm's law that we just derived? The answer to that lies in computing the potential at these points C and D. So let's do that. The potential at point C is going to be the potential at point C due to point A minus the potential at C due to point B. And likewise, we have the potential at point D uh, is the potential at D due to A minus the potential at D due to B. Therefore, the potential difference will then just be Vc, sorry, Vc minus V sub D. We can compute V sub C very easily. That's just going to be I rho over 2 pi. And then so we have 1 over AC, where this is AC, sorry, where this is AC, the distance between electrodes A and C, uh, minus 1 over BC, that is to say the distance between electrodes B and C. An analogous expression for V sub D is going to be I rho over 2 pi, 1 over AD minus 1 over BD.
we have our expressions now for potential at each point in the in the circuit C and D. We can compute what A, D, B, D, A, C, and B, C are. And those are all going to be given. Those are experimental parameters that we can control. In this experiment, A, C is equal to C, D is equal to B, D, and they're all equal to 18 inches. So we have everything that we need now to simplify the expression for uh, the potential difference between points C and D. We find that V sub C D is equal to rho I over 2 pi, and then we have 1 over AC minus 1 over BC minus 1 over AD, and then we have a plus 1 over BD. And as we just said, AC is equal to BD is equal to a distance D, which in this case will be 18 inches. We won't plug that number in quite yet. And AD is equal to BC is equal to twice that distance. Uh, once you do the algebra, it turns out to be I rho over 2 pi 1 over D. And if we invert that, then we see that the resistivity rho is equal to 2 pi D V sub C D over I. So let's just pause for a minute and look at this. This can be rearranged a little bit to express the voltage in terms of the current and the resistance. We have V equal I rho um, 1 over 2 pi D and this is the resistance. So you see that this has the form of Ohm's law. If you recall in the case of the resistor we had V equals I rho L over A. Now we have V equal I rho times this geometric factor. Instead of L over A, we have 1 over 2 pi D. We now have everything that we need to make connection with the formula from the chapter. So we can use Ohm's law to compute the current flowing into the circuit as V1 over 14.6 ohms. And therefore, we can express rho from the formula that we derived as 2 pi d times v sub c d over v1 times 14.6 ohms, which simplifies then to rho is equal to 42.2 ohm meters times v sub c d over v1. If we invert this to get an expression for the conductivity sigma, that means that sigma is equal to 0 0.024 times V1 over V sub C D. And this now is going to be Mohs per meter, uh, or the modern unit is Siemens per meter. Or if we convert that to millisiemens per meter, we have sigma is equal to 24 V1 over V sub C D. And remember what they got was 22 V1 over V sub C D. We each handled our significant figures a bit differently. As seen in the first part of this video, here's a map of effective ground conductivity in the United States. Typically, the conductivity ranges from a few millisiemens per meter up through around 30. Just for reference, the conductivity of seawater is 5,000. In a future video, we'll actually try to perform a measurement based on the physics described in this video. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.